You are never going to overcome imposter syndrome. And that's a good thing. You should be pushing yourself and challenging yourself to new levels of performance, to reach more people if you're speaking. And if you're pushing yourself, then you're going to be doing something you're not used to. You're going to be doing something you don't know whether you can do it or not. You should always feel like an imposter because you should always be pushing yourself out of what's comfortable. Because of this, imposter syndrome is not something you get rid of. It's something you have to get used to experiencing. And what we're going to do in this video today is help you to get used to the feeling of imposter syndrome and learn how to channel and process it rather than allowing it to overcome you. I can hear the soft ambience of jazz around us. In front of us sit two steaming cups of coffee. I look at him, he looks at me. In that quiet coffee shop on a weekday morning, I sit in front of my first paying client. I'm 23, he's 53. And I think to myself, what the hell has this 23 year old got to teach this person old enough to be my parent? How can I possibly help them and support them with their life experience when they've had twice the life that I've had. Since I first started running my own business, since I first started speaking in front of audiences, since I first started working with clients, I have felt like an imposter. I have thought, who am I to be telling you anything about how to live your life? But here's the thing. If you have something worthwhile to share, if you have something that helps someone, they don't care where it came from. You've got to remember that you have something to offer. You have something that can help others. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how old you are, what gender you are, what ethnicity you are, what sexuality you are, all of these things that can make you insecure, make you feel like you're not good enough. You've got to remember the essence behind who you are and what you do. So it's not about not feeling like an imposter because all of these things are going to affect you. They are going to make you feel out of place at time. What we're going to look at in this video is think about, well, how can you come to terms with feeling like an imposter? And most importantly, how can you do it anyway? Because all of the best leaders throughout history have done it anyway, despite how they felt despite their doubts, despite their insecurities, despite their hang-ups. And that's actually the very first tip that we're going to look at just now. I've got some of my favorite biographies and autobiographies sitting on this shelf here. We've got Team of Rivals, all about Abraham Lincoln's presidency. We have got Long Walk to Freedom, Nelson Mandela's autobiography. We have got a more contemporary leader, Barack Obama's first memoir. Do you know the commonality between those three leaders, both when a biographer looks at them and when they tell their own story in their own words? None of them thought they were good enough. None of them thought they were good enough to be the president of the United States. None of them thought they were good enough to overturn a racist regime. None of them thought they were good enough to win a war that defined a country. They all had insecurities and doubts and it never went away. No matter how long they led, no matter how much they were praised or idolized. And what you realize when you read about these great leaders of history is they all have imposter syndrome. <laughs> imposter syndrome is a natural part of taking on challenges. Imposter syndrome is a natural part of leadership. And so what I recommend is go and read the biographies and even better, read the autobiographies of people you admire, people you look up to, people you put on a pedestal. And what you'll see is there is nothing special about them. They don't have this kind of psychopathic invulnerability to not feeling nervous, to not feeling insecure, to not doubting themselves. 
They all have it. But what they do is they do it despite these feelings. They go out and they stand up for what's right. They go out and speak their message. They go out and try and make an impact in the world. So if you want to come to terms with your imposter syndrome, go and read about the people you put on a pedestal and you'll realize very quickly, they start to come off that pedestal. If you want to come to terms with imposter syndrome as a speaker, you've got to stop seeing yourself as someone who does public speaking and start seeing yourself as someone who is a public speaker. You've got to create a speaker identity. When you describe yourself to people, describe yourself as a speaker. When you put up copy and about me's and bios on your social media profiles and your website, describe yourself as a speaker. When I first started my business and I set up my very first website, my wife and I went to my old university. I had only recently graduated the previous year. So I knew the timetables for <laughs> the classes. And I knew that I could go into my old lecture theater and I knew that there was no lecture between one and two. That auditorium was empty at that time. So my wife and I walk into that book. She wasn't my wife at the time, <laughs> she is now. We walk into the building and I stood in front of an empty room and I pretended to speak to it from the stage. My wife took pictures. I put those pictures up on my website under the speaking section. David can come and speak for your organization. You can hire David as a speaker. I'd never done a flipping speech in my life. <laughs> not, a, not a professional, paid for a speech. But I started to see myself as a speaker before I even was one. Now I suspect that you watching this, you probably are a speaker in some respect. You're further along the journey than I was. You've got to create that speaker identity for yourself. See yourself as a speaker, describe yourself as a speaker, put yourself out there as a speaker. Because when you start to ingrain that into the level of identity, that's when you stop feeling like an imposter. That's when you start going, oh, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here on stage. I'm not supposed to be here speaking to people. I'm not good enough to have this opportunity. No, you are good enough to have this opportunity because you're a speaker, you're meant to be on stage, you're meant to be speaking on audiences. That is your identity. And when you create that identity for yourself, then you stop feeling like an imposter. I've got one more tip to share with you on how you can overcome imposter syndrome, or at least come to terms with it. Before I do, Another resource that might help you with overcoming imposter syndrome is my Amplify online course. This is a 12 month speaking program that guides you through your speaking journey at your own pace. One of the things that can make people feel like they don't belong or feel like they're not good enough is if they don't feel their skills are good enough. If you can develop your skills where you go, you know what, I'm a good speaker, I can create good speeches and I can have a good impact on my audiences, that is going to help you feel less like an imposter if you feel you can actually do the work. And that's what this program helps you do. What I'm offering for you as a watcher of this video is you can get your first month for a $1 trial. So you can experience the first month of the program. You can see what the program is all about, see the resources that are available to you, see how this program can help you. And if you decide, okay, this is what I need. This is what I'm looking for. Great. You can stay in it for the next 11 months and you can stay in it indefinitely after that as well if you want. If at the end of that month you go, it's not quite what I'm looking for, I don't think it's going to help me, that's fine. Cancel your, your subscription there and then and you don't have to pay any more than that one initial dollar. To activate this one dollar trial, in the description below is a link to the Amplify program. If you click on that link you'll get lots more information on what the program does and how it can help you. At checkout page, make sure you click the monthly instalment option. There's two options. There's the upfront payment, there's the monthly instalments. Make sure you click the 12 monthly instalments, that 12 instalments of $29. When you get to checkout, it'll ask you, do you have a coupon code? Click, I have a coupon code. And enter the code YouTube. All lowercase, all one word. That's where you came from, YouTube. That will take your first month payment from $29 
down to $1, you can come into the program, experience what it's all about for that first month, and then you can make a decision about whether it's going to be right for you going forward. Now, I've got one more tip to share with you on how to overcome that pesky imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome involves a lot of negative self-talk and self-criticism. A way you can overcome this is to find some evidence against that negative self-talk and criticism. This is about archiving your positive feedback. Anytime that someone says something positive about you, your message, your work, your speeches, take that and put it in a file, like literally in a file. So anytime someone gives you a nice comment on social media, screenshot that, put it in the file. Anytime someone fills out some nice feedback on a handout after a workshop or a session that you've done, photograph that, put it in the archive. Anytime someone sends you a really nice email, screenshot the email, put it in that archive. There are going to be moments along this journey where you doubt yourself, where you're insecure, where you have a hard day, or you get a little bit of rough feedback or rough criticism, or you're even just hard on yourself. When you have those moments, go into that archive, look at all the positive feedback, and realize that you don't deserve that criticism, that you shouldn't be so hard on yourself, that there are so many people out there who value and appreciate what you're doing. Sometimes we just need that reminder. Speaking is a, a very lonely and solitary journey. Although we speak in front of large groups of people, we take so much of that burden on our own shoulders. We spend so much time on the journey by ourselves, thinking through the content, practicing it, speaking in front of a camera in a room by ourselves. So you've got to remember that that outside input is there to remind and refresh yourself that there are people who are appreciating all of that work that you're putting in. And it doesn't necessarily make you stop feeling like an imposter, but it does make you realize that maybe you are appreciated for who you are and the work that you're doing. If you're feeling imposter syndrome, good because it means you're doing something meaningful. It means you're doing something worthwhile. It means you're doing something that can impact and change other people. Keep pushing yourself, keep challenging yourself because the world needs to hear not just you and your message, but the best version of you and the best version of your message. And you'll never find the best version of you on your message unless you strive for that ceiling. You might never reach it. You might feel like an imposter who's climbing up the ladder but never getting to the top, but keep climbing, keep striving, and you will do great work and have a great impact with your speaking.